Here's the take on the global equity issue from UBS. Take a listen to this. Caution is warranted on risk assets as global equity markets appear to be pricing at a swifter recovery with more certainty than is likely given China's experience and differences from Western economies. I'm pleased to say Evan Brown of UBS Asset Management joins us now. Evan, just take that a few steps further. What are you saying? So I think the most important takeaway there is that Everyone's excited about economies reopening in, developed, in the developed world, but we can't conflate reopening with economic normalization. So in our, in our research, we looked at China very carefully. Uh, they're a few months ahead of, of Europe and the, and the U.S. And you know, just, just because you reopen businesses doesn't mean people feel safe to actually resume normal economic activities. And we all know this on an individual basis, but you see it very clearly in the data in, uh, in, in China. And this is in a country that is way more advanced than most European and US, uh, countries in U.S. states in terms of contact tracing and, and testing and, and the like. So, um, you know, I think it, a caution is warranted in, in expecting any kind of rapid recovery here. When you say caution is warranted, Evan, outside of China, where specifically, within Europe, within the United States, just where? Well, I think I think globally uh, developed economies uh, caution is warranted in terms of expecting any kind of normalization of, of economic activity. The differences between U.S. and Europe it's very very it's it's very interesting because in the Europe in Europe you have more short term working arrangements. You've been able to keep employers and employees more closely linked together, whereas we've seen the tremendous rise in unemployment claims here in the U.S. and, and an unemployment rate that's going to rival the, the Great Depression. So um, Europe, at least in terms of getting to work, uh, may uh, be able to get started a bit a bit quicker. But I think in terms of general consumption, uh, there's going to be challenges in getting things going both in the, in the U.S. And, and Europe. And it comes down to what individual countries have done to make people – feel safer. So Germany might outperform in that sense just because they seem a lot more advanced on the testing and contact tracing front. Evan, let's fold in the price of the story. That's the analysis. Let's talk about valuations. The cyclical areas of these equity markets, whether it be Europe or the United States, have rallied off the bottom but still down a lot over the year since the start of 2020. So where do you see the most caution being warranted just in terms of the price of the story in the most cyclical areas of the market that you think may have gone too far, given your hesitation to say we'll normalize quickly? Yeah, so I, I, I think you're absolutely right. There's, there's kind of two. It's hard to talk about the market right now because there are two equity markets. There's uh, super cap tech and healthcare, and then there's, there's everything else, which is uh, more cyclical and, and beaten down. Um, I think that uh, what, some areas to be a little bit more cautious on are you know, everyone loves loves tech, but uh, you know t much of tech, whether it be hardware or or semiconductors, is, uh, is is still quite vulnerable to a slower cyclical pickup, and uh, you know that's also an area where uh, there's growing concerns about U.S.-China relationship and and potential export controls and the, and the like. And so there's a vulnerability in the tech space and a, a, an area that is a little bit more cyclical than I think people appreciate. You've brought up the U.S.-China conflict over the last several weeks. We've seen this play out now over the last several years. Interesting, over the last several weeks, it hasn't really made a dent in risk appetite or this market in any way, shape or form. Evan, I'm trying to work out whether the current breakdown in relations manifests itself in global markets for investors in a different way, whether the character of the fallout changes somewhat. Have you given thought to that? So I think uh, in terms of the character changing, uh, what's, what's interesting is last year, most of what we had to deal with was, was just trade tensions, right? And now uh, we've had other aspects of the U.S.-China strategic relationship there have been lingering concerns in the background. And by uh, those other aspects, I mean on technology, on capital flows, uh, and on you know, regional issues like Hong Kong and, and, uh, and Taiwan. And we, 
those issues were, were lingering in the background and their various flashpoints here and there last year. But now it seems like they're all coming up. They're all emerging at the same time. And, and uh, there's such uh, bipartisan uh, uh, support for being tough on, on China. And you're going to see President Trump and uh, former Vice President Biden competing on who can be the toughest on China going into the election. You put all these these things together and you make it not just about trade, but all of these other issues. And suddenly, especially the the constraints now being placed on capital flows and discussions about delisting and preventing uh, various U.S. investors from in, uh, investing in China, it becomes much more of a financial market issue. Um, and these are issues that are going to be we're going to be dealing with not just over the next six months, but for years and, and probably decades to come. And these are issues that Europe has largely been sitting on the fence with. And I think that's really critical to point out. We've had a really strong stance from the United States with this administration that's basically said time is up, we need to change. So strong that even the Democrats realise that's a winning position ahead of the election later this year. How do you think Europe comes out on this one issue? It's a, it's a, really, it's a really great question. I think, um, you know, Europe is able to stand a little bit on the sidelines just because the U.S. is being so aggressive. And so, uh, you know, clearly Europe is concerned about various er areas of, uh, uh, of uh, China's behaviors. They're concerned about cybersecurity. There's concerns about 5G and, and technology and the like. But the U.S. Is, is, is taking the lead on this so aggressively and you know, led by the Trump administration, which has decided to take a more unilateral approach to China as opposed to a more multilateral approach, which the Democrats would would go about. So that actually provides Europe a little bit of uh, flexibility to kind of wait and see. I think Europe is no doubt exposed on the on the trade side, and we've seen that uh, last year that that U.S.-China tariffs and that kind of hit on on global growth will will hit Europe, a very trade sensitive region, uh, and markets that are very pro cyclical. But uh, when it comes to these financial market technology uh, issues and regional security, I mean, Europe is able to be a little bit on the sidelines for now and see how it plays out between the U.S. and China.